I was at the Mumbai airport heading back to the US. I was travelling alone, and as I walked up to the line to go through immigration, the man at the very end of the line turned very quickly, faced me square on, and simply said, Hello. He was large, balding, and middle-aged, and I felt immediately unnerved for several reasons. I was already on my guard as I was travelling alone to a foreign country and something about his tone was off. As a young female, I'm used to random men hitting on me, but his tone was almost stern, not at all flirtatious. I said hi, but in a less than friendly tone, and I didn't make eye contact with him. He weirdly started peppering me with direct questions. Where are you flying? What is your name? Before I could even answer, I saw he was staring at my passport and boarding pass in my hand. And at that point, I realised that I couldn't lie, which is usually my defence when talking to random men. I began to wonder if he worked for immigration. His questions were so similar to the ones that they would ask, but I noticed that he had a passport in his hand and he was holding his boarding pass. So I began to ask him the same questions. He told me he was a businessman from the UAE and he was living in London. Then he asked me more direct questions. Are you travelling alone? No, I lied. My cousin is waiting for me at our gate. Which airline are you flying? American. Are you a student? No. What were you doing in Mumbai? Just visiting my family. Luckily, he was called up to the immigration desk at this point. He was asked to answer questions like any other traveller. After him, I went up to the immigration official. The man did not proceed to the security line but waited behind the immigration desk, texting and staring at me. I wondered if he was trying to hit on me, or if something more sinister was going on. What? I couldn't imagine. But I was pretty sure that he wasn't some plain clothes immigration officer. After I finished at immigration, I tried to ignore him and quickly walked past him to the security line, but he followed fast behind me. Luckily for me though, Indian airports divide security lines by gender and this is because there is often a pat down search at the end, for which they use the same sex security people. The female line was far shorter than the male line, so I made it through, way ahead of him. I then ran to the nearest bathroom, knowing that he could not find me there. Once inside, I realised that I had almost two hours until my flight and I didn't want to sit in the bathroom for that long. So I came up with a plan that in my jet lag state seemed to make perfect sense. I would disguise myself so that he couldn't find me again. I changed out of my colourful dress and put on my black sweatsuit. I also took out my contacts and put on my glasses. I put my hair into a bun and, as I'd been wearing no makeup before, I put on a ton of makeup. Then I ventured back out into the terminal. Luckily, I never saw him again and I hope he didn't see me either. I flew home and nothing bad happened. So was I being paranoid? As a flight attendant, usually, the most unsettling thing that you will experience is extreme turbulence or the occasional drop. But a colleague of mine told me a story of something that happened to her. She was flying back on a night flight to the US and she was just finishing switching off the lights so the passengers could get some sleep. As she walked over to the restricted part of the plane to get something, she noticed that an elderly gentleman was sitting there. She asked the passenger why he was out of his seat and in this area. The man got up and apologised, 
and said that he was travelling with his wife and had just gotten lost. As he began to move away and was heading towards the toilet, he asked if she could let his wife know that he was okay and that he was sitting in 16A, as he had been gone a while. He went in and locked the door, and as he did so, she began walking over to his wife, who was luckily still awake. Ma'am, I just found your husband in a restricted area. He's just gone to the lavatory and he wanted to let you know that he's okay. The woman looked up at her in shock and asked her if she was sure that she had the right seat. She checked and sure enough, that's the seat the man had told her, 16A. The flight attendant asked if everything was okay and the woman looked up at her and said that her husband had died and that his coffin was in the cargo hold. The flight attendant described him and sure enough, it fit his description. The flight attendant then apologised and went back to see the toilet the man was occupying. It was still locked. She knocked on the door several times and received no reply. After 20 minutes of knocking, she unlocked the door to find it empty. And after consulting with the captain, he confirmed that they were carrying a body. I work for a national airline that mostly operates regional destinations. For the most part, we use single aisle planes and in these planes there are only two galleys, the front galley and the back galley. As the front galley is so close to the cockpit, it is mandatory to have CCTV installed there in order for the pilots to see around the cockpit door. During a flight at cruising altitude, the captain called the lead in flight attendant and asked her why she let two little kids play in front of the cockpit door. You have to understand that the B737 is a very small plane, with the cockpit door close to the crew's seats, meaning any children playing there would have not only had very little space, but also be a great obstruction. The leading flight attendant confirmed that there were no children there, but the captain insisted that he could actually see these two children, a boy and a girl, playing in front of the door through CCTV. At this point, the leading flight attendant was not too happy, thinking that their pilots were pulling a prank on them. And after quite some time, the captain just let it go. When they touched down and got to the hotel, the captain pulled her aside along with his first officer and insisted to know if she or her crew really didn't see the two kids playing in the front of the cockpit door. She maintained that they didn't. And since the galley is less than 10 meters long from port side door to starboard door, it would have been impossible to miss two kids playing. The two pilots went blank, saying they'd both seen the children playing right there. In the morning, she asked her crew if they had seen any children playing in the front galley, and everyone confirmed that they hadn't. Up to this day, no one knows who were the two kids that both pilots saw on the CCTV. This happened to me a while ago, when I was 12. I was, and still am, a pretty tiny girl, no bigger than 5 foot and less than 100 pounds at the time. I was super shy, non-confrontational, and just generally a very timid person, and not used to speaking out against other people. I was on a very long flight home after visiting my father, I was with my mum and two brothers and sister. The airline couldn't give us seats together for some reason, so my older brother and sister were sitting somewhere else. We only had three out of the four seats as the aisle seat had already been taken by someone. Soon after we were settled, a very large man 
came and took the empty seat beside me. He immediately realised that he was far too big to fit inside the seat alone and pushed the armrest up separating him from me as his body pulled over into my seat. I was subsequently squished into my mother's side and he was twisted into a third of my seat at this point. Now this guy was insanely big, like he wasn't your average fat or merely just overweight guy, he was obese. He could have killed me if he'd have stepped on me. He tried talking to me a couple of times, but he just came off gross or stupid. He asked me if I took his blanket or something, when then he realised that he was sitting on it. He drooled in his sleep and asked me if I knew where the wet spot on him came from. It didn't take long for me to be grossed out by this, so I just resolved not to interact with him at all for the rest of the flight. I watched movies, read my books, but every time I was doing something, he'd try and find some way to touch me or ask me about something. I figured I should just sleep then because looking busy didn't stop him from bothering me. I slept on and off for a few hours, and when I'd wake up, I'd just watch a movie and fall back asleep a little while later. At one point I was extremely tired, so I was just about to fall asleep. I was at the stage when you're on the brink of just sleeping, when the difference between reality and dreams are indistinguishable when sounds and feelings from your surroundings make their way into a seemingly normal scenario in your dreams. At this point I felt something brushed past my thigh. I dreamt that I was walking through some kind of thriving Amazon forest and walked past some low hanging leaves that touched my leg, so I didn't think much of it, until I felt it again, slower and more deliberate. My mind couldn't think of something to explain, and so my dream was gone. Then I felt a squeeze on my thigh. I scrunched up my face at that. I knew that it felt wrong. I'd never felt that before in any setting. I was still exhausted, and for some reason I didn't open my eyes, but instead just stirred a bit and moved, hoping it would stop there. But it didn't. I felt a hand go up my arm and squeeze my arm, then my shoulder. I kept thinking if I pretend to sleep it would stop, but it didn't. I felt his grubby hand go up and down my left arm once more, before it slipped into my jacket and squeezed my breast. I was astonished. I couldn't move. I mumbled in a very groggy voice. No, and I shut my eyes and closed them tighter and prayed I was imagining this. My vocalisation made him more confident and he put his arm around me, trying to pull me closer whilst rubbing my leg with the other. He started whispering things like, Hey baby, how old are you? You're so sexy. You're the sexiest girl I've ever seen. What's your name? My name's AJ. Throughout the whispering, I kept repeating in a very scared voice, No, 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 I don't want to, please stop. And he kept repeating, I'm not trying to hurt you. I just think you're really great. Look, I really like you. I didn't know what else to do. So I shook my mum up and told her what was happening. She, a very small, fragile Indian woman, saw his hands trying to pull me up to him and shoved them off and asked him what his problem was. He responded with, I was just trying to help her. See, she was sleeping like completely on you and I thought she'd hurt her neck so I suggested she'd sleep on my shoulder. My mum goes, that's alright. She's fine. You don't need to worry about her. No, really. I think she could seriously hurt her neck. 
she should really sleep on me. He said this, grabbing my left arm with some force. This went on for a little bit until I pulled my arm free from his grip and my mum had her arms around me. Don't worry about her and don't touch her again. My mum told him as a final say, to which he replied with his hands raised, I was just trying to help. And that was it. He never spoke to me for the duration of the plane ride, which as it happens was another eight hours. As it turns out, he lived in the same city as me. But luckily I haven't seen him since. But after that, I've had many dreams about stabbing him if I ever see him again. Thinking back, I guess we should have called the flight attendant and reported him or something. But it never occurred to either of us at that time. I've since gotten over it, but it was a traumatizing experience. I remember it all too well, even eight years later. I've been flying for just over a year now, but I remember this trip in particular because it was just so damn weird. It was my very first layover and I was winding down after dinner by reading a bit and listening to music. About 10 minutes after tucking myself in, I start hearing something strange and just had this sudden tenseness and feel of unease. I pause the music and sit up straight straining to hear it. It was a muffled cry, like a woman was standing outside my door, softly sobbing her eyes out. She sounded like she'd been hurt, but not physically, more like she'd been hit by an emotional freight train. Being awkward and uncomfortable, I thought maybe the girl next door was just going through a bad breakup or something, and I didn't want to invade her privacy or embarrass her. So I took the coward's way out. I turned the music back on and tried to ignore it. Turns out that she didn't want to be ignored. The crying just kept on getting louder and more anguished to the point that my earbuds just couldn't block it out. I honestly was scared that she was going to hurt herself. So I decided that I needed to get my big girl pants on and go check it out before she did anything dangerous. I get my nerves in check and go next door and knock gently. A minute later, a girl a few years younger than I answers and she's fine. She is completely and totally normal. Not upset, not crying, no puffy face, nothing. I am confused as hell. But now I have to know what the hell is going on. So I just say, uh, I'm in the room next door and, uh, I thought I heard someone crying. I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. She is still baffled, but says maybe I heard the TV. I agree with her about the TV, trying to shrug it off, but there is no way on God's green earth that SpongeBob was making that noise for over an hour. I felt like every hair on my body was sticking up straight. The worst part is that I didn't have another room next to me. So the girl was the only person near enough to be making those sounds. The hall was dead quiet. So I told myself that it must be over whatever it was. And I noped back to my room. I walk in, close the door and like a switch, I hear a sniffling sobbing in my room. I looked everywhere and I couldn't find anyone. I listened to the walls, the vents, it wasn't coming from outside, so I hid under my blankets. It was very loud and even more miserable for the next hour. And so it wasn't muffled at all anymore. I tried to play music and ignore it, but it wasn't really possible to ignore something like that. Just when I was about to say screw it, and make a mad dash for the door, it came to a dead stop in the middle of a wall. I didn't sleep much that night. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. October is here, so get ready for a month of videos. 
If you guys like these stories, remember to share the love by liking and subscribing for even more creepy content, as it really helps me out. If you guys have a story that you would like to share, you can always send it to my email or submit it to darknessprevails.org. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. But for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.